Oh, so today we're gonna take a look at this lens here. This is a Sigma 56 mm f 1.4 and Noah, it's an absolute beast. Yo, 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 Karla Freta. My name is Ardolur. I am a photographer and film from Iceland. And as I just said, today we are going to take a closer look at this lens here. I'll show you what it can do for both photography and videography. And I'll be honest with you, currently this lens sits on my camera almost all the time. This is definitely one of my favorite lenses to use at the moment, especially when you're photographing models and doing portrait photography. It's razor sharp and it's wide open. You see this? This is like... <laughs> this looks so good. And it's super small and lightweight. What more can you ask for, really? And I know what you're thinking. Yes, yes, it's a great lens for photography and especially for portrait, but is it any good for videos? <laughs> yes, it's good for videos. Take a look at this. looked good. So it's a 56 millimeter and that sounds a little bit weird but when you consider that this is an APS-C lens so it's on a crop sensor camera it really crops into 84 millimeter so it's right up that alley of the 85 millimeter that everybody loves and that focal length is super good for portraits it's a nice level of compression and giving you that oh beautiful beautiful bokeh. The autofocus on this lens is all right it's not the best in town but considering that this is a third party lens and those lenses usually don't have the same capabilities on autofocusing as like a Sony lens on a Sony camera which is native to you know the system it's actually all right and the zoom room is pretty big and super super smooth and that totally makes up for the autofocus not being like perfect because it makes it easy to you know rack and hate a rack pull hey rack pull focus pull rack pull who's got to Focus. Having a little uh, complications with uh, the English, you know. Just as the autofocus on the Sigma is not native to the Sony, uh, English is not native to this uh, this body right here. <laughs> but I was saying that the focus ring is very smooth, which makes it very nice to manually focus pull. <whistles> Now before we dive deeper into what this lens is capable of doing in photography, which is really where I've been using this lens the most, let's take a closer look at the build quality. All right, so this is the lens. You notice that it's super, super small. It feels good in the hand. It's not super lightweight like the Sony 35 millimeter, but it's small. You think, I mean, this is super small. The first thing that you probably will notice is that the zoom ring is pretty big and it's super smooth. And I've said it countless of times. If a zoom ring is not smooth, it totally ruins the entire lens. So this is like this gets big ups. Now, another thing that you will notice is that the lens is wide, 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 wide open. This is, I mean, this looks beautiful. And when you take it down, you see the blades, they're big and beautiful and they look super, super nice. And if you take a look at the rear, it looks like this. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure if it's uh, weather sealed or not, but I'll, I'll write it here, yes or no. So I can take do the research on that afterwards. But it looks pretty nice. And again, you know, I mean, <laughs> whoa! Being that 1.4, it lets in a lot of light. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the last thing we can take a look at is the glass. It looks very, very nice. And as I've been saying, you know, the lens is very small. And I really appreciate it when you find small lenses because it's so easy to put this in the backpack and carry it on, you know, wherever you are going. So this is the build quality. Let's move on. All right, so let's talk about photography and the Sigma 56 millimeter. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is my go-to portrait lens, and I absolutely think it's fantastic. It really, really shines in the portrait, but I don't always use it for, for portrait. I also, like as I said, it's been on my camera almost daily since I got it. Like this soap focal length is super fun to use for the street shots. I haven't been with it to nature yet because I live in the city right now, but I'm sure it's good there too. I don't think I have to mention it, but it's a bokeh master. The capabilities of the bokeh that this lens is a capable of producing is super beautiful and I think the bokeh there is it's very pretty too. Now it's razor sharp. That was one of the first things that I noticed when I was playing with this lens that it's sharp like proper proper sharp. It really pulls out the textures when you photograph te textures and whatnot and I think it just I like it. I like it a lot. And as I said, I think it's wonderful for the street shot and those kind of shots. Probably nice for the product shot too. I haven't done that, but I find myself mostly using it for, you know, portrait shooting because it's there is like there is where it really shines in my opinion and for my style of photography. And now I know that there are many of you guys there who do night photography and are wondering about that. I have to admit, I don't really do night photography. I would love to do it, but I, I, I haven't like I don't know why I haven't gone into it yet. But I think it's like, you know, I'm gonna do this one more time, okay? It's, it lets in so much light. So I 
definitely think, and when I've been doing research and talking to other people that have this lens, it makes night photography just easy. It's, I mean, it's f1.4 and I mean, you want to do this one more time. And above all, it's small and easy to carry. Now, is it all perfect? No, definitely not. One thing that is good though, is that I haven't really noticed any big uh, chromatic activation, so there's no really, I don't know how to say that word, by the way, I've got got the comments on that. Like, there's no big fringe. There is some barrel distortion, or is it the cushion distortion? Like, it goes like this little distortion left in the lines, but it's no biggie, for me at least. But then I think that is worth to mention that it's not stabilized. So if you are like me who are shooting on a camera that is also not stabilized, that might be a problem for you. For photography, I don't really think that maybe for you night photographers who are doing it handheld it might be, but for me, for photography, not at all. And I've, I'm so used to not having a stabilized camera that I don't really think is a problem on the uh, when I'm doing the Beatles with this either for videography. But uh, it could be, you know, it would be better if it had, you know, stabilized, but it's not. <laughs> so that is uh, definitely a minus there. And then one more thing that I think is uh, worth to mention is that the minimal focus distance is 50 centimeters. So the, it's not, you cannot go very close with this lens. That's just how it is. Uh, and it makes, it's a little minus, but hey, you can't have it all, right? Anyways, it's time for the conclusions. Uh, my conclusion on this lens is that it's it's a great lens. It's a killer lens. It's a bokeh master. That's the most important thing. It's a bokeh master. And it's great for portraits and so much more. It's a vertis vertisal, vertisal, vertisal. You can use it for a lot of different things. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you are still watching, you are a complete legend. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask in the comments down below. If you could smack that like button for me, it really helps me out. Consider subscribing. I create a lot of, lots of, lots of videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.